WIFO FM Jessup. It, you're listening to the morning show here on WIFO, and it's now time for the world famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO for this 26th day of July. And it's brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn and Associates. Hi, I'm Mandy Yalmans. And I'm Raymond Brown with First Southern Bank. As your locally owned community bank, we're here to help our community grow. Our customers are why we are here. You can tell we want your business. We offer all types of deposit products, personal and business. We have fast, efficient service, and yes, we have online banking too. I'm sure we have an account to fit your needs. Stop by or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. FDIC Equal Housing Lender. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be. A small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Do you know why most people don't invest outside work or at all? Because they don't know where to start and they don't know who to talk with. If this is you, give me a call. Hi, this is Sean O'Quinn. I can help set up a plan no matter where you are in life to get you on a suitable path to a sound financial future. Give me a call, Sean O'Quinn, at 912-385-1000 or stop by the office at 212 South 1st Street right here in Jessup. That number again is 912-385-1000. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. World famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show, right here on WIFO, 105.5 FM, Big Dog Country Radio. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. How you doing? Good. Doing good? You heading to the courthouse this morning? I'll be there. All right. You got uh, the 930, Bert Guy, Judge Guy. Not sure what's all on the docket, but we know the... Second ball in here for John John Cuskies on the docket, so we'll have a full report on that for you tomorrow here on the local news. Okay. All right. Bob will be there at the courthouse to report on the happenings, and it'll be on the local newscast tomorrow morning around 7.15. Yeah, they meet in C, don't they? Courtroom C. C, the one that's connected to the um, to the police department there, the sheriff's department. Right. Yeah. The most safe one, apparently. Most secure. Most secure. Yeah. They've got all the equipment where you got to go to the... Metal detectors, and they got security, you know. It's, yeah, it's, it's the, the most, most secure court, courthouse right. of all of them. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's where the Superior Court That's meets. where Superior Court takes place, right. Right, and the most secure one there. And not in the big old building, but in the, the building over there where the um, Sheriff's Department is. All right. And the judge today is Burt Guy. Is Burt right? Guy, yes. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. All that will be reported tomorrow morning on a local newscast around 7.15. Good interview there with Coach Shaw. Things seem to be coming together for the upcoming football season. Friday week, of course, will be scrimmage game against his dad from Metter. Well, they're out there right now as we speak. Like I said, they're doing early morning practices, but they're going five days a week up until the scrimmage next Friday, which is – and take place here at JC Stadium, 7:30 a week from this Friday for the first day of the school year as well. So, but it should be a fun scrimmage. Like I said, Metter's always got a good football team. Like I said, Coach Shaw's father's taking over as the head coach over there, so it should be a good day. But a big event this Saturday, the 912 Sports Media Day. Coach Shaw mentioned that all the players he'll take with them. It's going to take quite a few. Event. So, it should be a fun day Saturday morning. Now, is everyone invited to Everyone's that? Anybody invited. can go to yeah, it? Anyone can go. So I it's said, uh, the 912 Magazine's uh, Media uh, Day this Saturday? At Coastal Pines, right. And what time again? 9 to 12. 9 to 12. Like Anybody all the can area, just yeah, by? All the area coaches and players will be on hand. So it's a, it'll be a packed house. 
always yeah. fun to talk to the other coaches that will be playing. So bring you their interviews next week. And always looking forward to it. They do a good job. It'll be good, you know, for folks to go there and see the coaches from the other teams, see players from the other teams, and and then of course uh, um, be around our Wayne County players. Wish them the best for this twenty twenty three season. They're working hard. It's fun. To, but practice are fun to watch. I enjoy going out and watching practice. Yeah. See a lot, learn a lot, get an idea of what they're going to be doing. So okay, but it's intense. I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. Oh, it's, you know, it's they're they're like smart to practice in the mornings. You don't want to do it in the afternoons when heat uh, index value is over 100. Probably nobody's standing around. Everybody's doing something. <laughs> they got everybody moving here, there, and yonder. And, you know, I see no, just not one squad practicing and the rest of them watching, and you know they're they're all doing something, huh? You know, you heard about those two hikers who, who died hiking in the in Death Valley. You know, temperatures up to 114. Why in the world would you want to go hiking in Death Valley? With temperatures at 114, had you know the two that went both died, you know, and they, I'm sure they took plenty of you know water with them and stuff like that. But as we mentioned before, that heat exhaustion can come up on you and you don't even know it until you know you've waking up off the ground or something like that. Even if you do get up, so you know we encourage folks just to be careful out there because you know the temperature may be 95 or 94, or 96, but that heat index is up there 102, 103, and uh, humidity just adds so much more to it here in the south. So just be careful. Be heat smart, as John Weatherby says. Be heat smart. All right, and so that's going on. Well, how's the girls' softball team coming together? They'll be playing soon. Yeah, they had a scrimmage yesterday in South Effingham. I think they won one, lost one. But like I said their season kicks in early August, so a lot of talent on that girls' softball team. Should be a fun year. I know, just, you know, you, you, you take a look at what the girls' softball have done in recreation in district and in state, and, you know, you've got that talent moving up and for the last few years. So it should be a pretty talented softball team this year for Wayne County. should be very talented. Got good pitching, good hitting, good defense. So it'll be fun. Okay. Looking forward to calling those games at home. All right, I know that the, the SEC media of days are over. Did you hear or see anything from that that just kind of stuck out from all the different coaches who spoke? It's just funny. You can just tell coaches don't want to give much information, you know. <laughs> Nick, Hold it close to the vest. Yeah, Nick, Nick Saban <laughs> talked more about his vacation in Italy than football. <laughs> Lane Kiffin got up there and complained about NIL and how everything's corrupt. So didn't say anything about his team. So, I mean, that's, they're, these are smart guys. You know, they, they go in with an agenda like, you know, I don't want to tell these people anything. So I just, we ain't telling them nothing. So, but, I know nothing. Uh, I mean, they're playing a Sergeant Schultz, aren't they? Yeah, I know I mean, nothing. It, it was fun to watch, entertaining for sure. But, you know, but Georgia, like I said, everybody's just anticipating Georgia to make another big run and possibly win a third national championship. So. But Alabama, the word for Alabama, they're hungry. You know, they're upset. They have Alabama's won. hungry, huh? That's, that's what they claim. All right, they they're they're, they're playing. They're tired uh, of getting the leftovers. They want the main meal, huh? <laughs> they're still crying over those two losses that they lost on the last second field goal. So, yeah, uh, that is tough. Uh, everybody's been on that end of it. So, apparently, it is apparently tough. they've got a lot of talent, though. I think. Well, of course they do. I mean, they're, they're either one, two, or three in recruiting every single year. Got, Last year they were one. I don't know where they are this year. They got thirty-four players projected to go to the NFL on that roster. So, you know, they got a good football team. So, but their big question marks quarterback. They said they lost their Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young. So, oh yeah. yeah. So the question is who's going to be the quarterback at Alabama? But they got plenty of talent. Nick Saban. Is Nick Saban so? But they got a tough, you know. That West is tough, you know. Jimbo Fisher's getting all that pressure to win at Texas A&M, and Kelly's got it rolling at LSU. A lot of people think LSU's the team to beat in the West. So we'll see how it all plays out on that side. Next year there won't be a side. There'll be everybody together. That just together. seems weird. That just seems weird not having. You know, we had that for most of our lives. We didn't have East West, but we've had it for so many years now. It just, just seems like natural, but. Just the top two teams, and it'll be interesting because you could have a lot of teams that have the same record, and how they going, you know, do these tiebreakers is going to be something else, you know. Uh, starting next is it next year, right? Yeah, not this year, next year. Next next, next year, year next year they'll together. you know it'll just be the top two teams that will play in the SEC championship, yeah. and instead of uh, the East champion and the West champion. 
was, I was, you know, said we got Trevor Wallace at Kentucky. Bob Stoops uh, did a good job praising him, his talents. Says he's going to be a big impact player for the Wildcats this year on defense. So, wishing him the best of luck. I think this is his junior year at Kentucky. But his brother Tavion, who's on Wayne County's football team, just a junior, getting all kinds of offers. At least you offered him this past week, and George mm-hmm. is supposed to be in time this week. So, I mean, this kid's getting. I think he's got like 20, 25 offers already to choose from. So, but he was tickled with the LSU offer because that's one of his favorite teams. Okay. His brothers at Kentucky doesn't want to go to where his brothers at, so he wants to go somewhere different. He wants to go so, somewhere different, huh? All right. Uh, but, but apparently, he has his pick of the litter. He can go wherever he wants to go <laughs> once he graduates. But he's got two more years. He's only a junior this year. But it's amazing how early these kids are getting offered. You know, they get. These, I know, these schools come in. Jeez. No. But if you we wanna, know you just entered middle school, but we were going to offer you <laughs> what? The, the place, <laughs> but the NFL, the place to play is you know the running backs are yelling, and screaming, they're not getting oh, any yeah. money. But the yeah. quarterbacks are getting all kinds of money. There's a quarterback driven league now. Forty million dollars a year. To Forty play million a year to play. That's a good gig, right there. That's a good gig, but it's a, you know it's 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 tough. Lot, I mean, it's tough to be a. I mean, gotta we, win. We've talked about that before. You got a top prospect in college, played for an SEC team or Big Ten or Notre Dame or USC. Somebody, I mean, played against tough competition, put up all kinds of big numbers, and they get the NFL and they can't do squat. And even though they've played against the best competition, it's just a whole different level when you get to the NFL. I mean, her, this LA Charger quarterback just signed for forty million. Son, they say Joe Burrow is going to. Exceed that, and then Patrick Mahomes is going to come back. Well, and going to exceed. I mean, what Patrick where, 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 the keys to Kansas City. Where's he stop? I mean, <laughs> how, how, high, how high does it go? <laughs> These poor running backs are like, hey, how about us? How about us? You know, and the, the the running backs today they have to be very versatile. They've got to be able to run. They got to be able to block. They got to be able to catch this uh, this quick out passes and stuff like that. There's just so many things they have to do. No more longer you just hand hand the rock to somebody and they run it off tackle or up the middle or around the end or something like that like it used to be. Most teams are going by running back by committee too, as they get two or three guys. Yeah, they just do one, by so. committee. You know, and uh, you're going to yeah. just have a handful of uh, dominant backs like you know Hendry and stuff like that. But rest of them, you know, can just you know, it doesn't matter who's in there. Nick Chubb said they can't win. They go out there and run for two thousand dollars. 2,000 yards, and they say, well, they don't have anything left in the tank. <laughs> That's right. We, 2,000 yards, well, you've been hit too many times. Right. Well, we're yeah, not going to give you a long-term contract. Long you've been hit so. too many times. And the Giants gave Barkley one-year deal, $11 million, though. So he got – he's at least back in camp. So, But that was interesting. All the running backs got on a Zoom call, apparently, you know, talking about how they're just being overlooked. Yeah, and yeah they not getting Zoom call money, this so. weekend. A lot of the, yeah, all the running backs did. All these other positions are getting all this money, and then they're like, what about us? What can you do? It's a free market, you know. Uh, the owners will pay you what they think that you're worth. If they can replace you for somebody cheaper, they will. I mean, you think about pro athletes like that, you know, like in football or you know, all you know, football or baseball and soccer. It doesn't really matter what it is. You've always got somebody who's trying to push you out of that job. Somebody that's younger, that may be a little stronger, a little faster, willing to take less money. So it's a, it's it's tough for these uh, you know professional athletes to stay on top like that because you've always got somebody trying to push you out. You know you always talk about all we always talk about all these guys you know uh, you know leaving college to go play in the NBA. Well, if they're going to play in the NBA, somebody's got to be let go. All these people, all the guys have got to be let go of these uh, teams in order for these younger guys to come up. And so it's it's dog eat dog when it comes to professional sports. Well, the good news was the NIO deals. They're going to stay in college because they're making more money in college than they go to the pros. Yeah, so just stay in college and play. Play another year. Well, you're a six-year senior. How'd you get that? <laughs> Don't want to take a pay cut. <laughs> <laughs> Life is good at college. That's <laughs> right. Making good money, so I'll stay here. Uh, you heard, you know, a lot about Stetson Bennett uh, at the beginning of the um, of the of, of the summer practice. I hadn't really seen any or heard anything camp, or anything articles camp, on it since then. Camp just started, so you know, camp just started. Yeah, so. Okay, but the preseason games will be here for you. Know, I know so. you'll be playing next month. It'll be interesting and in, in, in see Stetson see Bennett him. out there, L.A. Rams, and and playing there. And, uh, it'll be very very interesting and, and Stafford there, you know, guiding him and mentoring him. On to success, hopefully. All i got to say is, Matthew Stafford, you better stay healthy. 
Because once you go down and he gets on that field, you, you may never see the field again. <laughs> Kid can play. He can play. We know that. Yeah. All those naysayers out there, there's still, some of them are still naysaying. You know? still Even though he's won two national championships and all that kind of stuff, you know. There's still some haters out there. It's just sad. It but, is. And it's a great story. Why, yeah. How can you not love this story? They need to get over it. They'll be building a statue in Athens about 10 years. The mailman will be a big statue. <laughs> two national I mean, walk on, two national champions. I'm telling you, there's just, there's, just, there's, just, you're, you're, there's you're a statue. You're envisioning it right now there in the, there's no the sports dive. complex there at Georgia. There'll be a statue in 10 years of the, the mailman. I mean, I say this is the greatest, to me, this is the greatest sports story ever. I mean, you, you look at his story. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, amazing. grew up in Pierce County, diehard dog fan, wanted to play in Athens, goes to Athens first time. They say, you know, you're never going to see the field. He leaves, goes to Juco College, has success, then comes back, finally gets an opportunity. But when he gets there, everybody in the world, including Kirby, tells you, you know, you're, you're, not, not, you're not playing. You're not playing. <laughs> you know, just get it to your head. You're not the starter. And he said, okay, whatever. I'll keep showing you. I love that story Kirby told you, you know. They're watching him in practice. He's with the third team, and he's beating the first team defense all day long. And Kirby finally got in the coach's room and said, we sure this kid's the third-string quarterback? And they said, <laughs> well, we won't know until you put him on the field. Coach, he said, well, go put him on the field. And the rest is history. Yeah. Two national champions, undefeated season. And I, I love these people. So, oh, it was all about the defense. Did you watch the Ohio State game? The guy I know threw, he had to come he threw back. For, he threw for 285 yards in the, in the second half. I mean, come on. And then the TCU game, he just, like Kirby said, he made plays with his legs. Uh, that was what was so amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a highlight, like I said, ES, ES, or SEC Network had this show this week called Them Dogs, where they just recapped the entire season last mm -hmm. year. And you watch, the, you watch his highlights. It was just amazing the year that he had and the plays that he made with his arms and his legs. So history is written. And like I said, can't take it away from him. He's got two national championship rings. Got a nice four-year deal with the Rams for millions of dollars and nice signing bonus. Life's good for Stetson Bennett. Okay. All those haters can hate all they want. I don't they think he cares. All. all he does is win. But I promise you, in 10 years, they'll have a statue in Athens. <laughs> the mailman. <laughs> the mailman delivered. I was listening to our AM station yesterday, which is Fox Sports Radio. You know, sports talk all the time. And uh, they had Brian Harmon on yesterday. Of course, the – UGA player who won the Open this past weekend at uh, in England, Britain, and um, and he is a great storyteller. I mean, he was he had Rich Eisen just rolling all over the place on the story about getting the cup through the airport. airport you know, right. how, how get it? Through. It was too big to carry on on the little plane that he took from from England over to Amsterdam to get on the plane. They went and left Amsterdam to came back to the United States. And he just, you know, and he had it in some sort of bag type thing that, you know, or container type thing, but you couldn't tell what it was. But just the stories that he told about just trying to get that cup through customs and on the plane and all that kind of stuff like that. And and uh, and they talked about, you know, drinking out of it. But his wife said, look how filthy that is in there. So she had to clean it up real good for them to be able to put beverage inside of it to drink out of it. He is a great storyteller. And uh, and uh, and when um, I'm not sure if it was Jim Rome or all of them talked to him yesterday. You know, uh, Dan Patrick, uh, uh, Jim Rome, uh, uh, Rich Eisen, they all talked to him yesterday. I heard three interviews with him yesterday, and uh, it talked about how people say five foot seven Brian Harmon. And Rich Eisman was talking about why do they mention that you're five foot seven? What does that have to do anything with golf? You know, you know, five foot seven Brian Harmon. You know, then you know Brian's talked about a shortstop for one of the um, uh, one of the um, uh, uh, major league teams that's five foot six to play shortstop and does is great. You know, he's a great shortstop. I'm not sure which one it was, but he says they don't introduce to him as five foot six, whatever his name, you know, his name is for this uh, major league baseball team. But boy, they sure do with him. Five foot seven, Brian Harmon. You know, what does height has to do with anything when it comes to golf? You know, but such a great storyteller. I mean, and him and his wife love going to comedy shows when they go like uh, to um, uh, New York. They go to the Comedy Cellar and, and places like that. And apparently, he's picked up on some of that because man, he had all those hosts just laughing like I don't know what. He is a great storyteller.
So um, first time I've ever really known about Brian Harmon in this type of uh, situation and just a, a great guy, you know, and a good storyteller, wins the British Open or the Open as they call it, and uh, enjoying life right now. You didn't have any trouble getting the check to the customs. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that was direct deposit. <laughs> Made a lot of money. Yes, sir. And they asked him if uh, the live uh, tournament from Saudi Arabia has contacted him. And he has not heard from them. And he hasn't heard from them before this. Uh, he's never, never heard, heard from, from them. Him. Never heard from them. And uh, so, you know, he's got his own thoughts and feelings about it. But he just, you know, he says, I'm not going to go into it. He says, but yes, us golfers do talk about it. You know, when we're out there on the practice range or, 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 or uh, whatever the case may be. Yeah, we, we talk about it. He says, you know, I'm not going to tell you what we say, but we talk about it, you know, about the live. And you know, just he's just hoping that the whole thing can come together and be one instead of two competing different tours. Uh-huh. It's basically what he thinks and a lot of them do. But uh just a great, just a, a a great storyteller, a great guy, a big dog fan. Of course, went to Georgia, and uh, Brian Harmon, and just uh, I don't remember him at Georgia because we really don't keep up with golf, the golf team there at Georgia. But just a super, super guy. Love those interviews yesterday. Absolutely love those interviews yesterday on our AM station, AM thirteen seventy Fox Sports Radio. All right, what else is going on, Bob? Anything? I said school's about to begin. We have high school principal Brett McDaniel here tomorrow. I said the open houses are a week from tomorrow, uh, Thursday, August 3rd, from 3.30 to 6 p.m. Always an important time for students and parents and teachers. So, again, school's about to begin. All right, well, one week from Friday, school will begin. All right. One week from Friday. Right, one week from tomorrow's the open house. So. And then, like I said, we got the scrimmage Friday night. Looking forward to that. We'll be broadcasting that, so. Be fun to see what the team looks like against somebody besides themselves. You know, that's one thing to battle with right. yourself. It's always good to see you up against some other competitions. So. Right, right. And so, so um, looking forward to it. Yeah, looking to forward to the scrimmage, and then two weeks after that, it'll be the first regular season game. Who is it? Brooks County. No, Bradwell's first. game. Bradwell's first yeah, home game. Okay. Bradwell at home, and then Brooks the second okay. game, and then Bradwell then Brooks. The first road game is in Baxley on September first. So. So Labor Day weekend then, huh? Yeah, taking on the Pirates. Okay, so two home games after the first scrimmage game, <laughs> and the first two home regular season games in a then a weekend. We're not the only one high on the Wayne County Yellow Jackets. The state of Georgia is high on the Wayne County Yellow Jackets. They put out a preseason who did bracket the uh, Georgia. Okay. She, uh, some sports county, and they they did the whole season, played mm-hmm. it out, and they've got Wayne County in the semifinal game against Bainbridge. And losing to Bainbridge and BC, of course, winning a third straight quad A state championship. So they got the bracket already filled out. So just for fans to look at and coaches to look at. So, but most somebody besides Wayne County thinks Wayne County is going to have a pretty good football team as well. Well, good, <laughs> so. good. Glad to hear that. I was reading something the other day, a couple of weeks ago, about they were you know you know ranking high school teams in the nation, no, not the state, the nation. Buford was right there on top. Right. And they got Georgia's number one quarterback, too. The, the kid that's going in Georgia's yeah, number they one, got right number on one top. quarterback. Bro. I don't know how he wound up at the University of Buford, but he did. So, of all the schools in the state of Georgia, you think he. <laughs> well, that's where he landed. We might end up having to play him. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think Buford's in the 4A. They, they oh, moved. They're, they moved? They're, yeah, they're in a different classification. Oh, okay. So we wouldn't play them. We wouldn't okay. play them. Okay. Um, all right. But Benedictine's the team we're going to play. They're in our region. But yeah. They've got them projected to win a third straight state championship. But they got the number one quarterback. Yeah. He's third in the nation. He's going to F. He's committed to FSU. So he's got a tough name. But tough name, but he, he quarterback he played, for BC. He, he quarterback last year. He's back this year. So it'll be that'll be a big game at JC Stadium when the BC cadets come to town. Okay. But maybe we'll play him twice. Play him down a regular season and play for the playoffs. play for the state championship. <laughs> That'd be fun. All right, Bob. We're about out of time. Anything else? That's about All it. Right. Have a great day. All right. World famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn and Associates.